Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Today we are talking about heartworm treatment in dogs. So the specific reason that I want to talk about this is not necessarily to make you experts. This is not to tell you how to tell your vet how to treat your dog with heartworm. This is purely to explain what the standard treatment is that is set by the American Heartworm Society and to help you guys understand exactly why each of these things that we do for this treatment are required or why we highly recommend doing them. If you haven't seen my other videos about heartworm, I would encourage you to go back and check those out. You'll see the playlist up here, hopefully, if I am on top of it and remember to put it there. If I don't, I apologize. Let me know down in the comments. I just want to make one really quick comment before we get started here, and that's that if your vet is doing a protocol that is different than this, they very well may have a good reason for doing so. And this treatment protocol is what is being recommended as of now, 2020, in the US. So there may be places across the world, if you're in other countries, where this doesn't apply because some of the drugs that we have available, you may not have available. Uh, such as malarcine. I also am going to quickly talk about the slow kill method at the end of this video, so I will make a link down in the description if you just want to skip to that part and get there ahead of time. So what is the standard protocol for heartworm treatment and why is it considered standard? Who sets the standard? All of that stuff. So the American Heartworm Society comes out every year with revised, slightly revised recommendations on how heartworm ought to be treated. It comes out with a whole bulletin about all of the research that has been done, saying here's what's been done, here are what we recommend for treatment, and here are the other options that you guys have. So starting day zero, this is the day of diagnosis. Basically what we're going to do on this day is start and confirm that it is not a false positive, meaning we're going to make sure and confirm that the heartworm diagnosis is accurate. And this can be done one of two ways. One, you can do a microfilarial test. This is where you take a little bit of blood and you look for the baby worms. And if they're there, then you know, yes, for sure, there is heartworm here. And if there aren't any microfilaria present, then you need to probably send off for a confirmatory test to an outside lab. As of today, we are also going to begin exercise restriction. And this is really important because with heartworm disease, what happens is these worms get into the cardiovascular system and the pulmonary system. So they're in the lungs and in the heart, depending on how far and how many worms there are, how big they are, all of those things. And the reason that it's important to have exercise restriction is that these worms can cause significant amounts of trauma to the cardiovascular system. And we can see collapse or we could see even things like a heart attack if there's a high enough worm burden or enough cardiac remodeling. Now, if the dog is not already on heartworm prevention, and even if they are, we are going to start them on heartworm prevention as of day number one. So get your confirmatory test. Usually it takes a day to confirm Yes, this is a true positive. So the next day, day one, is when we are going to start our treatment regimen. Like I said, the first thing we're going to do is put them on a heartworm prevention. Now you might ask, well, they already have heartworm, so why are we trying to prevent heartworms? Well, I want you to go back and check out my video up here about what is heartworm prevention, and it will really explain a lot of what I'm basically gonna cut down into a couple sentences. And that is that heartworm prevention is not just a prevention. It kills specific stages of the heartworm, and it also will kill the microfilaria or the baby heartworms. And there is a little bit of a theory that it may help contribute to decreasing the strength and vitality of the adult heartworms in the cardiovascular system. And the other thing that we're going to do is start doxycycline. Now, doxycycline is an antibiotic. You might think, well, what does it kill the worms? No, no, it doesn't kill heartworms. What it does is kills a specific bacteria that is within the heartworms. Now this type of bacteria is called Wolbachia. Weird, funny name. I left a link down below if you wanna look more into that from Wikipedia. Not that in-depth research on my part, but it's enough for what you need. Now Wolbachia is what we call an endosymbiote. And this means that it lives within something and is in symbiosis, meaning that it helps that other organism to survive or thrive more than it otherwise would. Now, Wolbachia, actually we know for sure that it has some effect on the reproductive performance. So it helps the 
heartworm microfilaria before they're born to mature appropriately. So what we're trying to do is kill the Wolbachia so that they no longer are going to be present for the purpose of them not continuing to produce microfilaria or at least decrease the amount. The other thing that Wolbachia tend to do is that when the adult heartworms are killed, the proteins from the Wolbachia tend to cause an anaphylactic reaction. And so we're actually trying to kill the Wolbachia so that we do not have as high of a risk of anaphylaxis. Now, once we start the doxycycline, we're gonna wanna wait about eight hours and make sure that we do not have a reaction. The other medication that we're going to give is prednisone or a steroid. The reason that we're giving a steroid is basically to decrease our risk of anaphylaxis during treatment. And also it should, in theory, help decrease the amount of damage that the heartworms are doing to the body by decreasing the amount of chronic inflammation in both the heart and in the lungs. Now we're gonna do the prednisone and we're going to do the doxycycline for about 30 days. Now on day 30, all we're gonna do is heartworm prevention and now we're gonna have a month waiting period. Now the reason for this month waiting period is it gives time for the body and the heartworms to basically clear all of the Wolbachia proteins. And it also is going to help give us a little bit of time for those adult heartworms that you know, no longer have the Wolbachia to hopefully not thrive as well, become a little bit weaker and a little bit easier to kill. Now day 60, we're also going to give heartworm prevention. You'll notice this is a trend. Every single month for this whole treatment, we're going to give heartworm prevention. We're also going to give a drug called melarsamine. Now this is an injection that goes in the lumbar area, so the muscles that go along the spine, in the back. And the reason that we give it there is that it's less likely to cause significant problems as it can cause quite a bit of inflammation when it is given. And for whatever reason, these muscles tend to be a little bit more resilient to that. This product that we give called melarsamine, or Diroban is the official name, the reason that we give this product is it is an arsenic compound that is labeled for killing of heartworms and is, is the only product that is labeled for killing adult heartworms as they can be really resilient to our ivermectins and macrocyclic lactones, which you can maybe find out a little bit more about here. Now this product can cause some reactions within the patient. Sometimes they're a little depressed, lethargic. They're just not themselves. They don't wanna eat because of the pain from the injection but also as those heartworms die, sometimes we get an inflammatory response associated with it. So just like we did for the last time we did the doxycycline, we are also going to give prednisone today and for the next 30 days. Now the reason for the prednisone for this time period is as the adult heartworms die, there is a still a small chance of some Wolbachia being present. And so we wanna make sure that we don't get the inflammation associated with that. And as the body has to clean up these adult heartworms, it's basically going to help decrease the amount of remodeling and inflammation associated with this. We're also going to have very strict cage rest. So we had some exercise restriction before, now we're going to basically do cage rest for the next 90 days. And the reason that we want to do this and the reason as much of a pain as it is, is that when these adult heartworms are present and dying, we have a much higher risk of increased damage to the pulmonary and cardiovascular system. As these worms have a lot of inflammation, as they may cause more turbulence, and the more exercise that they're getting, the higher their heart rate, and the more likely they are to have a very significant reaction or fainting spells, or sometimes even collapse into death. So that's why we have very strict requirements and recommendations for cage rest and nothing more than just a couple short leash walks. Now, day 90 is where it gets maybe a little bit more interesting. So we're going to also do heartworm prevention and we're going to give another melarsamine injection. And then we're also going to start the prednisone. Now, day 91 is where we do a second melarsamine injection. Now, the purpose for these back-to-back -back melarsamine injections is that the first injection on day 60 is going to kill the majority of the heartworms. And this is hopefully going to kill 80 to 85% of them. The second injection in, that is back-to-back, 24 hours apart, 
is going to allow us to kill the remainder of the really strong heartworms, those that seem to be much more resilient than the others. And this, and this is going to go along with six to eight weeks of exercise restriction. Now, day 120, we're going to test for microfilaria, so the baby heartworms. This is going to tell us, first of all, has our heartworm prevention been killing them as they were born? Is there a risk of Wolbachia still being present? And if none of those things are true, or if we come back negative, then we're good until a year, at which point we're going to test for heartworm again. If positive, then we have to go back and do another Melorsamine injection and do some more doxycycline and a few other things that I'm not gonna get in depth about. But at day 365 or one year later, we're going to test for heartworm. If negative, we're good to go. If positive, we're gonna to have to do a slightly modified treatment protocol again. So the full length of this treatment protocol is really about 120 days of exercise restriction, actually a little bit longer than that, 150 days of exercise restriction and about day 90 is gonna be the last full treatment. But really our full protocol is not complete until day 365. So what about the slow kill method? A lot of people ask about this when we talk about heartworms and this is basically a salvage procedure. So this, so the slow kill method is a theory by which we kill heartworms over a matter of years, two years, instead of a matter of weeks. Um, as of 90 days or 120 days. This is basically reserved for dogs that are in very late stage heartworm disease. They have a lot of cardiac remodeling. They're very symptomatic and they're not good candidates for the melorosamine as it ha does have toxic effects. And if we kill off all these heartworms, we may cause more damage than we actually fix. But one thing to keep in mind with the slow kill method is that a lot of times we have to keep these dogs exercise restricted for two, three years. And so that can be a really long time. We're taking the adult heartworm life span from six years to maybe two. 95% of heartworms are killed with monthly ivermectin treatment after two years. That's a very long time to keep your dog on basically cage rest. So any dog that has a high chance of success with melorosamine Typically, we're gonna recommend going through that method and going to strongly discourage using the slow kill method. And that comes straight from the American Heartworm Society, not from me. So this has been a really good refresher on heartworm disease in dogs and cats for me. So hopefully you guys learned something as well. I also wanted a quick mention here, cats heartworm treatment. Cats typically, the heartworms are only going to live for about two years anyway, and they typically have a very low load. And so often we don't see very many or any symptoms associated with heartworm disease in cats. But the slow kill method is typically going to be recommended because melorosamine can be very toxic to them and we don't really have another treatment option other than the slow kill method. And with these cats already probably gonna kill most heartworms within two years by themselves without any treatment, we typically will go that route and most of the time we'll, we'll take care of it. Hopefully understanding heartworm treatment will help some of you guys understand why your vet is making you go through this convoluted heartworm treatment program and protocol and really understand what each of the things do. Now, for those of you that don't have a dog currently going through heartworm treatment or have not had a dog going through it, hopefully this will encourage you guys to use heartworm prevention. Now, prevention is much cheaper than the heartworm treatment at our clinic, the typical treatment cost for heartworm is about $1,200, whereas monthly prevention is a matter of like $10 or $15 a month. Um, so you can think, your dog can live 10 years, not have the disease that goes along with heartworm, and um, you get typically deworming as well for $15 to $17 a month. It's pretty reasonable. I would really encourage you guys, if your dog is not on heartworm prevention, to start it up sooner than later. Have a fantastic rest of your day, guys. Down here in the box below, I will leave the playlist for this whole Heartworm series. And also, uh, if you wouldn't mind, make sure you guys like and subscribe. If you are subscribed, make sure you hit the little bell notification so that you are notified when my next video goes live, which is every Tuesday and Friday at about eight o'clock in the morning, central time. 
sometimes it's a little bit off if I mess up my schedule, but that's pretty typical. Have a fantastic rest of your day, guys. We'll see you next.